Once again, we're back on YouTube, and we're studying the Word of God in the book of Ephesians, chapter 2. Today, we'll study chapter 2, verses 8 through 9. You would think it would be the most simple of all verses in the world, one of the most popular verses in the world, and um, it gets complex, it gets complicated once you try to break it down, but God is so good that the Holy Spirit will reveal to us as we study the Word of God how we are supposed to break it down, what we are supposed to take in our hearts and souls, and what we're supposed to leave with, and how we're supposed to live our lives when we study these two verses by God's grace. Well, hello, hello, everybody. If you're coming in, come on in, and we'll study the Word of God in the book of Ephesians. Y'all know Paul wrote this letter to the uh, church in Ephesus, who was, uh, he was in uh, prison at this time when he was writing this letter. So uh, you would feel like there'd be so much doom and gloom and hardship and tears and um, depression and oppression in his letter, but there is none of that. So come on in, loved ones. I see y'all. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God's blessings on you. So you think when he's writing this letter, he's in prison and he's going to spell out doom and gloom, but he spells out goodness and mercy and grace of God. And, and that's the true mark of a Christian. If you want to know the true mark of a Christian can go through hard times. Uh, the Christian doesn't want to go through hard times, but can go through hard times, uh, can go through suffering, can go through pain, but but uh, compared to the world, uh, they're both going through the same thing perhaps, but the one has peace and joy in Christ while the other one is like, is this it? Is this it for life? No, that's not a Christ follower, and Paul is not like that. He, he's Even if prison is it for him, he's still rejoicing, he's still happy, he's still giving, he's still serving, and he's still hoping for the best. And I hope that's you and me, loved one, as we go through life in, in all circumstances, to give to others, to serve others, to love others, to help others. Um, and uh, to, to give glory and praise to God alone. So, Father, as we study these two verses, open up our minds and hearts uh, so that we may know you better. That's the bottom line. It's not to say I understand the verse. It's to say I love my Lord more. I draw myself more to him and to his word, and that's what we want, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. So now in verse in chapter 2 of Ephesians, we'll read our verses for today. For by grace, it's chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. It's by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast, right? So how is one saved, and why is there a necessity of being saved? I mean, what's, what's the deal? Well, we studied in chapter 2 that we, uh, in, in the times past, so there's the past and there's the present. That's how I want you to see it. There's the past and there's the present. So in the past, it said in verse 2 that we walked according to the course of this world. We walked according to the flesh. We walked according to the prince of the air. And that course uh, and, and that way of living led us to ultimately death and hell. That's where that leads us to. So that's the reason why there needs to be salvation. And and uh, and you also find it in, let's see, in verse 5, verse 2, 5, even when we were dead in sins. So that leads to death, it leads to condemnation, it leads to eternal hell. That's why there was a need for us to be saved. And so you can read it in Romans chapter 3, verse 23. You know, all of us have sinned. All of us have fallen short of God's glory. All of us have uh, been given the mark of hell, and that's where we're going. All of us. There's not one person, good, bad, beautiful, not so beautiful, rich, poor, uh, educated, not educated, black, white, male, female. It doesn't matter. All of us have sin. All of us have the DNA. All of us have fallen short of God's glory. Now, if you go to 623 of Romans, it says, for the wages of sin. So all of that, us being born in that, what's the wages? What's the payment? For the wages of sin is death. And 
not only death physically, but eternal life in hell or eternal death in hell. That's living without living and dying without dying. And so that's the bottom line. That's where we get uh, if we don't have Jesus Christ, if there were no salvation. So that's why salvation is very necessary. And even if you look at Colossians chapter 1, verse 21, it says that we were enemies of God. It's not like, oh, well, I guess I fell short of the glory of God. Well, I guess I'm just, you know, not doing so well. It's we, you, you and I become an enemy of God that, in that course of the world, in that walk that we had with Satan you and I are to be, I mean, that's what it says. I'm not making it up. Let's go find out if I'm, if I'm right or wrong here. Let's go uh, to Colossians chapter 1. We'll go to Colossians chapter 1, and it's uh, 21, and it says, And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works yet now have been reconciled. There's a there's a separation. Uh, if there's a reconciliation, there must have been a separation. And so in Colossians 1.21, it's like we were in en enmity in our minds with God. There, there was, it, it was like uh, fighting against God. That's unreal. I never even have seen it that way. So uh, even in Isaiah, oh, y'all know I had to go to Isaiah. Where is it? In Isaiah chapter 59, Isaiah chapter 59, and it's in verse 1 and verse 2. Uh, you know, in verse 1, I know it says that is his arm too short to save us or is, is here his ear too dull to hear us? No, the answer is no. But then in verse 2 it says, but your iniquities have separated you from your God and he has hidden his face from you that he will not hear. So, so not only are we enemies, right? We are separated from him. So that separation, holiness, sin, that separation, holiness of God, sin of mankind, that separation makes us enemies. Now, how in the world do you reconcile with a God that's holy and we are unholy? This is what this verses, these two verses are about. It's by grace we are saved. So Jesus Christ had to come into the picture. In Luke chapter 19, verse 10, it says, the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. So he has to come to, number one, seek, and Number two, to save the lost. And it's in 1 Timothy. Let's go to 1 Timothy real quick. 1 Timothy is kind of at the end of the Bible. 1 Timothy, Titus, Philemon. So 1 Timothy chapter 1. And I believe it's in 15, 115. Um, thus, uh, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all exceptions that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of which I am chief. Who's writing this? It's not Timothy. It's Paul writing to Timothy. So he's like, okay, Christ came into the world for what? He To save sinners, to, to reconcile us to a holy God. To, the separation must be cut. The enmity must be cut. We must be reconciled. But the only one that could do it is Jesus Christ. So there is no spirituality. There is only Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the only link for us to heaven, for us to God. That's the only link. No, there. If you can choose anything else, it ends up in zero and it ends up in hell. There is no other means of repentance. That's in Acts chapter 4. No other way of repentance. And that's what we need to remember, loved ones. And remember in John chapter 1 verse 29, when John the Baptist saw Jesus Christ, he said, what? Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So behold the Lamb. He didn't say behold this religion. Behold that person. Behold that person that's dead and everybody's worshiping him. Behold this idol that's a wood and everybody's worshiping him. No, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus Christ is the only way. He said it in John 14, 6. I am the way. I am am the truth. I am the life. Nobody, he said it, nobody is coming to the Father except through me. So Jesus expressed it, and the Bible is screaming 
of this. I mean, it's just, uh, let's go to Hebrews real quick. And Hebrews, where is it in Hebrews? It's in 8, I believe. In, in 8.12, watch this. For I will be, once you get to that cutting of the separation, the cutting of the enmity, the reconciliation with God, watch what happens. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. That's unbelievable that our sins, our iniquities, our transgressions, our past is not remembered anymore. Man will remember it. You and I will remember it. He won't remember it because that's how gracious it is. How did we get there? It was only through God's doing and sending his only son, Jesus Christ, to come to save us. So, how is it done? Well, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, it says that it is by grace. It is by grace. In the Hebrew, it's chaset. By grace, it's his loving kindness. It is his merciful kindness. It is his long suffering. It is his patience. It is his favor. And it is the favor means that he gives us something we did not deserve. He gives us life. He gives us a life everlasting. He gives us life with him in heaven. And that's something we cannot earn nor did we deserve it so that's what grace is getting a gift that we do not deserve so it's by grace so when it says it's by grace that means he is the source y'all get it he's the source the the grace the goodness comes from god the favor comes from God. Salvation comes from God. The ideology where its origins are comes from God's heart. It's not from man. It's not from money. It's not from activities. It is only through what God has done. It is by grace. So I need you to see the word by grace and know automatically that that's the source. The source is of God and that's our gift. So that's the most important part of uh, that, that, those two verses. By grace, it means the source. The source is God, our Father, and there is no other source. No, you can't look at education, which have been, has become mega woke today. You can't look at money, which is uh, declining in its value. You can't look at people, which will disappoint you and me. You look at Jesus Christ and God. He is the source. It is by grace. It is his favor. That's how we know that where, where this is coming from. So now, uh, if we go on with this verse, for by grace are you saved. So there was a big price to be paid here. God sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for you and me to bleed. Thanks to Adam and Eve. Uh, Adam was not deceived. Eve was. Where was that? That's in 1 Timothy. I just recently saw this verse. I mean, I've read it maybe a thousand times, but I just recently saw it, if you know what I mean. 1 Timothy. Titus Philemon, again, back there. Uh, first, second Thessalonians, first Timothy 2, and is it 14? And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Now, Eve was deceived, but Adam committed treason. I mean, he's right there. Why didn't he stop her? Why didn't he say, no, don't do it? I don't see an interception here by Adam. And, and then to top it all off, he's not deceived, so he is willingly sinning. That's even worse. I mean, she's deceived, but he is willingly, willingly sinning. And because of their decisions, because of the decisions they have made, we are fallen. And, and our DNA, our spiritual DNA is is filled with sin and Christ had to come and take away that sin. So that was interesting. I I don't know. I've read this thing a thousand times. That was one of the fewest times I've seen that where Adam was not deceived, 
but Eve was, but Adam, I, I, I mean, that's treason. You know God, you know what he said. You did the opposite. And thanks to them, uh, we need salvation. So it's by grace you are saved. Jesus Christ came. He, he, he said he must be lifted up in John chapter 8. And he was lifted up. As Moses lifted up the snake on the pole, Jesus must be lifted up. In Deuteronomy 18.18, 18, Moses did say that there is a prophet coming that is, I, I am like him, he is like me. In a sense, uh, he was saying there's a prophet coming. Uh, and as I lift up a pole, as I put this snake on the pole, so too there will be a man that will become a snake. on. He's not a snake, but he will become a snake on the pole because he'll take your sin and my sin and that's what, uh, that's what uh, Moses was talking about. So if it's by grace, well, then where is faith? So it says it's by grace you're saved through faith. So I'm, now it's like, well, what, what saves us? Is it grace that saves us? Or is it faith that saves us? Well, remember the source is grace. But faith is the means of to where we get to the source. Y'all see that? It's like a little, it's like a little car where we have to get into. It's a conviction, it's a belief, that's faith. That a little car with all its little seats for all these little Christ followers to get into that car, and it's a means, it's a catalyst, it's a motion to get us from one place to the other, to the source, to get us from where we are right now, to get us to the source of belief, of goodness, of health, of healing, and of salvation. And that is through faith. Now, I guess the question is always going to be, um, what, I mean, is it our faith or is it his faith? And this is where everybody starts arguing and I ain't got no time to argue up in here. And so we are going to just flip to different places, like as in maybe Romans chapter three, so we can find out. Uh, Acts, Romans chapter three. Romans, it's not coming fast enough. Here it is, Romans chapter three. And in verse, everybody knows uh, verse 23, for uh, all have sinned, all have fallen short of the glory of God. Now let's read on uh, in 324, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. So Christ redeems. It is, uh, we were justified. We were made whole. We were made clean. We were made pure. We were made 100% pure, 100% righteous by his grace. That's the source. Nobody going to change the source. Nobody going to take the source down. Nobody going to try to, uh, try to uh, dumbify the word of God. He's the source. And in verse 25, whom God has sent forth to be a propitiation. He sent for Jesus Christ as a propitiation or the mercy seat or our atonement or the payment through faith. There it is again, through faith in his blood. So we have to have the faith. Uh, the, the faith is the means to get us to the source. And, and so it is through faith. It's by grace again. He says the same words. It's by his grace through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins or the cancellation of our sins that are passed through the forbearance of God or through the patience of God. Look at the kindness of God in this, the gentleness of God, the patience of God to allow us to get to him via faith. Okay, that's one. And then I'm going to turn to what I'm remembering is Romans chapter 12 about this faith. Because everybody's wanting to know, well, is, oh, wait, before we get to 12, Romans got some, some great things here. It's The whole thing is great. Uh, how about Abraham in chapter 4, right? Um, let's see. In chapter 4, let's see. For Abraham was justified by, if, if Abraham 
4, 2. If Abraham was justified by works, he has wherefore to glory. What does he have to glory but not before God? But So in verse 3, in 4, 3 of Romans, For what says the scripture? Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Now to him that works is the reward, not reckoned of grace, but of debt. In verse 5, but to him that works not, so to him that works, it is a reward. So when you work, you're going to get a reward. You go to work, you reward, you clock in, you clock out, you get a reward, which is a paycheck. That's that's coming your way. You know that's coming your way. Uh, but that's not a debt to you. That's not grace to you. You worked for that. That's what verse 4 is saying. You worked for something. You got the payment. Now, that's not grace. And that is not considered to uh, somebody having a debt for you. That, that's just what you're going to get. Now, in verse 5, though, in Romans 4, 5, but to him that works not... This is not telling you not to work, okay? This is talking about salvation. To him that works not, but believes on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Well, this tells us that th this is your faith. Uh, it's counted for you as righteousness because you did not work for anything, but you believed in God that he would justify you through the blood of Jesus Christ. And it is your faith that was counted to you as righteousness. And that faith is not of works. Okay, let's go to chapter 12 in Romans. Chapter 12, verse 3. For I say, through the grace, again, grace, given to me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dwelt to every man the measure of faith. Wow. I believe God gives every man the same measure of faith. Wow. Yeah, that's in 12.3. So was that faith by you and me, I don't think so. I think that faith was given to us by God. And that faith is the same measure given to anybody and everybody. Now, it is up to you and me to use that measure of faith that was given. It's like, you know, uh, if you get a ladle and you're going to get soup and you're going to give a soup to 100 people, well, that ladle... Uh, is helping you give the same amount of soup, the same amount of ounces in, in uh, a bowl to every single person you and I are going to give that bowl of soup to, okay? Instead of going, yeah, here's a spoonful, three spoons, four, four spoons for you, ten spoons for you. No, the ladle is going to help you and me measure that accurately and give the same amount to everybody. Well, that same amount of faith in a ladle, if you will, by God has been given to all mankind. And it is up to that man or woman to use that faith as a catalyst to come to the source of grace. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Y'all see what I'm saying? Y'all understand what I'm saying? So uh, people say, well, then if you're going to say that, then you're using your faith as works. No, we said that faith is not of works. Faith was given to us by God, but we have to use that faith to get to God and to the source. And because we know that it is not of us, then we can't boast in it. So we go back to now Roman. I mean Romans. Yeah, might as well. We've been studying Romans like Ephesians. Now we go back to Ephesians, loved ones. If I can find it, it's hiding. Okay, Ephesians chapter, Galatians, Ephesians chapter 2. Yes, which comes after 1. Here's chapter 2, uh, Galatians chapter 2. For by grace we've been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. Mm -hmm. So now we, you know, some verses say, and this is not of yourselves or that of not yourselves. Uh, to study the Greek, uh, grace is a feminine, it's in the feminine, it's written in the feminine. Faith is written in the feminine, but this or that is not in feminine or masculine, it's neither. 
So what is, and that, and that not of yourselves. So what is that referring to? Grace or faith? No, neither. It's all of it. It is by grace you are saved through faith and that, the grace, the faith, the salvation, and that, all of that is uh, not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. You see that? So many people sit here and argue that that or or the word this is saying, oh, it's grace is is uh, not of yourselves. Or no, no, they say, no, faith is not of yourselves. Duh, it's the whole thing. Remember, grace is feminine in the Greek. Uh, faith is feminine in the Greek. But the word that in the Greek, that the way this is used, is neither one, neither masculine or feminine. So it's referring to the whole sentence. And that is not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Salvation is a gift, grace is the gift, faith is a gift, and us coming to him through faith, the catalyst to the source, is a gift. It ain't of you and it ain't of me. It's not because you're pretty and it's not because you're intellectual. It is because God is good. That is what we need to remember, his grace. Is beautiful. And, is, and he's rich in grace, by the way, according to um, chapter 2, verse 7. Exceedingly riches of his grace. You see that? that? That's huge. I mean, this grace ain't just a little grace. It's exceedingly rich. Wow. That's unreal. So now in, in uh, verse 8, it says, It is not of works, lest any man should boast. It's not of works. You can't do it. Remember when we read Romans, it says if you work and you get payment, well, you deserve that because you worked. But this was not of works, so you cannot boast, it said. Okay, let's go back to Romans chapter 3. Romans is calling me. I've got to go to Romans. Let's go to Romans chapter 3, verse 27 now. Because it says... Oh, well, let's go to 26 first. Why not? To, to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believes in Jesus. So Jesus is our justifier. He justifies us. Then it says in verse 27, Romans 3, 27, where is boasting then? Remember th what we studied right now. This is not of works lest any man should boast. He wants to make sure nobody's going to boast about his or her salvation. Okay, so in Romans chapter 3, 27, where is boasting then? It is excluded, cannot boast. It is excluded by what law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Okay, therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. So the law can't help us. Our works can't help us. It's the faith that God has given to us that he has given to all men the same measure he has given. It's up to us to use that faith. So we do have a part in this to come to him. We got to use the faith. You can't just get a gift during Christmas and go, I can't believe I got this gift and it's, my God, I don't know what's in it, but I, I'm just going to stare at it. And then comes like Valentine's and you're still staring at it. And then comes like uh, Easter and you're still staring at it. You haven't opened the gift. And then comes 4th of July. And I pray to the good Lord that the peace of God that passes all understanding with the blood of Jesus will fall on this nation, America, and the nation where you're at. And that it would protect us from harm, from the borders, and from not only from without, but also from wickedness from within. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, it comes 4th of July. Where was I? 4th of July. And you're still looking at the gift. And then comes, um, and then comes what? No, November. It comes November, and, and then it's like uh, Thanksgiving, and you're going to have some turkey. And, and, but you're not opening that gift. You're like, oh, my gosh, I wonder what's in the gift. Hello, open the gift. And then comes Christmas again, and you still haven't opened the gift. Well, there are people that have a lifetime of faith that will not unpackage it. And they will blame God and everybody else about their situation. They will not unpackage the gift of Jesus Christ, but it's given to them. 
He, he, Jesus Christ is the propitiation, the mercy seat, the payment, the atonement of our sins, and not only for our sins, but for the whole world. Now, the word whole in the Greek means whole. It means everything and everybody. And that's in 1 John 2, 2, just in case you wanted to know where it came from. 1 John 2, 2, he's the propitiation of our sins and also for the whole world. You got to open up the gift, baby. You got to open up the gift. So if you're listening today and you're like, uh, well, I, I thought I could work myself and then and, and, and I can get there because of what I pay or what I give or what I do and I'm so kind and I don't do adultery and I don't do fornication and I don't murder nobody, but I, I'm better than the person in jail. I'm going to heaven. No, you're not. It is by grace through faith. It is the salvation of Jesus Christ, and the gift must be opened. Must open the gift box. And we're not talking about, would you like door number one, door number two, or door number three? No, this ain't, no, this is the way. There's only one way. This is the truth, is Jesus Christ. This is the life, is Jesus Christ. That's it. And the reason why he's the gift and he's the source is that no man will be able to say, I did it my way. Which, by the way, leads straight to hell. Mm -hmm. So, this is so cool and interesting to know that by grace is our source and through faith is the means the catalyst by which we get to the source and that faith was given to us by god himself it is all god all him and he is rich in mercy and rich in grace and that mercy and grace and that salvation is given unto you and me freely so that we may be justified and not worry about our past but to consider him on every single day in every single thought in all our ways and bring honor and glory to him forever and ever and ever hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Lord, we praise you. We thank you for showing us how beautiful you are, how marvelous you are, how gracious you are, how kind you are, how long-suffering you are, how patient you are, how you walk with us and love us in spite, despite of ourselves. You are a good, good God. And we would like to say, the Lord is good. He's a refuge. He's a refuge in times of trouble. We know you care for us. And we give thanks to you for you are good. Your love endures forever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Well, we did it again, y'all. We had ourselves church. And we drew closer to our Jesus Christ. And we loved his scriptures. And we loved what he said to us through his word. And we drew closer to him. And we know we're underneath the blood of the lamb. And if you have any doubts about that, come to him as you are and say, Oh, it's by grace and through faith. I am coming to the cross and I am being born again and I am taking your blood and I am being washed by the blood of the Lamb who has taken away my sins and who has destroyed the past and who has taken away all my worries, all my condemnation, all my fears and all my anxieties. I am free. I am free. I am free in Jesus Christ. Amen. And if I boast, I'm going to boast in Jesus. I ain't going to boast about nothing about myself. 
It's all him. 100%. Amen? <laughs> and amen. I love you all. Be well. Be strong. Always walk with the Lord.